my 2023 and hello 2024, we'll be rounding this off with the top 10 worst or disappointing films of 2023. Now, let me just say, this is my opinion. We've had some highs, we've had some lows. There aren't any films from this year that I absolutely hated, unlike the previous year. However, there is a list of films this year that were straight out just plain bad or were just very lackluster. Now, let's start off. Starting off with number 10, you have The Black Demon. Now, if you guys haven't heard of this film, I'm not surprised because this film looks like, just looks like a dumpster fire. The acting is abysmal. This this film is just about a guy taking his family on a trip and he's doing some work on a on a oil rig and he finds these two workers stuck on this like oil rig in the ocean where they're surrounded by this great white who wants to eat them and this the shark has killed some of the killed some of the workers that were previously on this rig that they were working on in the ocean and it's old and broke down and falling apart. And it turns out that the dad, the guy that owns, that works for this business that signed off on this old place for people to work at, they were he practically just sold he sold himself out just just so his family can get a better life the the acting is bad the cgi is sloppy the shark is doesn't even look realistic at all it is just terrible all the way around so yes for number 10 you have black demon for no, next next coming up you have slaughter house slaughter house is a horror comedy film about well it's pretty much in the title and it's self-explanatory this this at this college this girl gets this sloth and gets this sloth that she randomly finds and brings it into the house and the sloth goes mad and you know, starts killing people. I didn't even finish the film because it looked, not only was the acting very cringe, a lot of the comedy, a lot of the humor in this film was, did not hit the mark at all. This was something that you would find on a low budget, this looked like a low budget television film. That's how bad this film was. And the only thing I learned from this film is that humans are terrible and that we need to stop messing with animals. Leave them be. Shut down all the, zoo, all, all the zoos that are going on. And the sloth didn't even look realistic at all. I mean, it just looked like, you know, an animatronic walk. Uh, uh, animatronic being controlled with a remote. That's how bad it looked. But I, like I said, I didn't even finish the film. I got maybe like 15 minutes in and I said to myself, I can't do this. This is just, this is just way, way too terrible. So yes, number nine, you got Slaughter House. Number, coming in at number eight, you have My Fault. My Fault is a Spanish film. And it's about this girl who goes, whose mom is getting remarried and she's depressed about this break, about being broken up with by her boyfriend. And she, when she meets the, her soon to be stepbrother, they get into this weird incest relationship with each other. And even though they're not related, this whole situation felt really uncomfortable and towards the end when the parents find out what they're doing they basically just let it happen I mean it's when they find out it's like well this is wrong they shouldn't be doing this but what are you going to do stop them 
Um, yeah, kind of. This was just very, very uncomfortable, and I did not like it in the slightest. It just made me feel very icky and slimy inside, and just, ugh, yeah. Uh, so, number eight, you have Slaughterhouse. I mean, number eight, you have My Fault. Number seven, coming in, you have About My Father, starring Robert De Niro. Now, this film, even by looking at the trailer, I knew that they were just trying to emulate Meet the Parents. And Meet the Parents is a classic film, and that can never be duplicated with something like this. And... Robert De Niro's best performance of the year is still Killers of the Flower Mode for me. And just another failed attempt. This is another failed attempt at Meet the Parents. And it just wasn't funny to me. I mean, it's had its moments. But overall, I don't think there was anything from this film that I couldn't go back to watch from meet the parents and I prefer Robert De Niro in that film over this film. Number six, you have Beautiful Disaster. Now this starts off as your typical rom com with, you know, the bad boy chasing after the girl and, you know, her playing hard to get and the only reason I watched this film is because Dylan Sprouse was in it and, you know, he was a huge part of my childhood with you know, Disney Channel and The Sweet Life. So this is that's the only reason why I watch this movie. But this movie is just two different films in one. The first half is your typical rom com with the bad boy chasing after the girl that he wants, and then the later half of the film turns into this completely different plot with this chick having daddy issues. And it was just all over the place. And this movie was just a very hot mess. I don't know what else to say about this, but I would just skip over this entirely. So, yes, number six is Beautiful Disaster. Number five, you have Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Now, the first Shazam surprised a lot of fans. And I think it could have made more if they released it during maybe around Christmas time. Especially since, you know, that's, considering that's when the film, in the film, that's where it took place. I think you could have marketed it around Christmas and have a lot more people show up. And that's just my opinion. But the first one really caught me off guard because it was really great. This one took a huge nose dive and was the complete opposite of everything that the first, that made the first one great in the first place. The problem with this film is not only are the villains very lackluster, I mean, the action scenes are pretty cool, but the CGI is sloppy, and we don't all know that when it comes to, when it comes to DC, their CGI and their visual effects are not the best at all, and the... This is why I first found out about Rachel Ziegler, actually, is because of this movie. The humor in this film is not funny at all. I don't even think I laughed once. The only thing that kind of saves this movie for me is Zachary Levi. But then again, he's the complete opposite of his teenage character, Billy. And that's where it kind of where you kind of lose the fans a kind of lose the fans a bit and I think there should have been more of a better just better writing when it comes to the personalities between Billy and Shazam and this film was just not the typical sequel that I expected it to be Kind of like Wonder Woman 84. Everything that made the first one great, they did with the complete opposite route. And it just was not as great as the first one. So, if there isn't another one after this, I wouldn't be surprised by that. And I wouldn't really 
care that much. So on to the next one for you have a recently released film on Netflix. You have Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. Now I am not a huge Zack Snyder fan in the slightest. While his films are always great to look at from a visual standpoint, his visual effects, his cinematography, and his scores in his films are absolutely perfect. He lacks story to a cohesive story with interesting characters. Now I do love in this film, I love that the I love that the main protagonist is a female, is a woman, and I do love that I do love the visual effects, the action sequences are badass. But other than that, the she is probably one of the two only characters in this film that I care about. Aside from the villain, her and Kara and the villain. I can't remember the villain's name in this film. But they are the only two people I care about. Everyone else is severely underdeveloped and they there, there's a lack of character development with all the other characters aside from the villain and the main protagonist of this film. There's way too much slow motion which everyone knows is a thing when it comes to Zack Snyder and there are just times where you just don't need that and it's very annoying. The ending on a cliffhanger is typical is I mean I expected that since you know since he said I mean we're obviously going to get a part two but this film is just a mixture of a bug's life meets Star Wars. And I felt like I, the plot is very generic, and I felt like I've seen it before. The plot is just Pixar's A Bug's Life with Star Wars. And like I said, everything I named about the film, the, the ensemble cast, action, action sequences, visual effects, cinematography is great. But there's too much slow motion, generic plot. They, on there's... A lot of characters that are underdeveloped and this film was just everything that Star Wars everything that Star Wars is and Zack Snyder definitely needs a writer on his team because he is not the best at writing and that's definitely his that's definitely not his strong suit. So, yes, number four, you have Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. Number three, you have Leave the World Behind. Now, I had no idea what this film was about, and I still have no idea what this film is about. This is one of those films that is trying to be more intelligent than it is. I only watched this because one of my favorite actors was starring in it, Mahershala Ali, and he's absolutely phenomenal. I don't know what this film was about. I love the cinematography and the acting is very spot on. I love the acting in this film, but it seems like they were trying to juggle way too many ideas at once. They had a great idea, but it was not executed properly. And just let me know in the comments what this film was about because I am still trying to break this down and I have no no idea at all. Number two, you have Ant-Man and Wasp Quantum Manium. Probably one of the worst films of this year. And while this film, I mean, I had an idea of where this film was going to go. And when initially the ending to this film was not the ending that we got. What originally happened was Kang and Modoc won and they left Scott and uh, Was down in the quantum manium and escaped. And I would have preferred that ending a lot more. The fact that Kang got beat by a bunch of ants was very, it was just so sad, especially considering how they built him up so well previously before that. And he gets beat by a bunch of ants. I mean, 
despite what Jonathan Majors did, he did an excellent job in this film, but he's the only good thing about this film. And, you know, the comedy in this film is, you could, you expect, ex I always expect comedy in an Ant-Man film, but Ant-Man probably has the weakest trilogy in the MCU. And this film, aside from K, there is nothing, nothing good that came from this film at all. And finally, number one, for my worst film of the year, that's White Men Can't Jump. This film was completely unnecessary. We did not need it. No one asked for it. And the only good thing about this film that I liked was the spectacular ensemble cast. Other than that, the humor is not the same. It tried to mix comedy and drama together in this film is was a very bad idea especially considering that a lot of these actors are comedians playing in this film and jack harlow great comedic actor not that great of a dramatic actor and this should have been left on the shelf because this film was not what anyone asked for at all. Stop making remakes of classic films no one asked for. So yeah, that is my top 10 worst films of 2023. Let me know what you guys think. What is your list? Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and enjoy your new year. <laughs>